My father used to tell us about a town his grandfather founded called the Bow. We never believed it was an actual place, but it was. This is the story of that town, a little town, with so much promise. Antoine Le Beau was a French fur trapper who made his way from France to the United States via Canada. He married a Lakota woman and settled near the banks of the Missouri River on the Cheyenne River Reservation. He began a small trading post that became successful and attracted others who began setting up business around that trading post. The post soon became a small town that was named Le Beau after Antoine Le Beau's death in 1905 in honor of him. Le Beau was like many other small towns that sprang up across the country with the expansion of the territory and people settling across the Midwest. Le Beau grew at a fast rate with a population boom and soon had a saloon, a hotel, churches, livery stables, a residential area, a schoolhouse, a red, a red light district, and even a newspaper. But what really made Le Beau a thriving town was the cattle industry and the railroad. Cattle magnate Myrtle McKenzie decided to expand his empire to Le Beau, where he quickly made the Matador Cattle Ranch the largest cattle ranch in the area. Business was good, but really boomed when the Minneapolis and St. Louis Railroad arrived in 1907. Cattle were rounded up and herded through chutes toward the river. They were then herded onto train cars to be shipped across the U.S. for sale and purchase. The only problem was getting them across the Missouri. They were moved on pontoons and it was a slow process. The railroad decided to build a bridge across the river next to Le Beau, which would increase the flow of cattle greatly and bring more money into the pockets of everyone, but those plans would soon halt. Murdo had decided to send his favorite son Doty to oversee the running of the Matador. Doty was a bit wild and occasionally caused trouble in the bow. He also had an enemy by the name of Bud Stevens who was a bartender at the saloon. One day Doty threatened Stevens and as he turned to walk out, Stevens drew a gun from under the counter and shot him three times killing him. Stevens was arrested and put in jail. The trial took place in Selby the next town over and lasted less than a week. Stevens was found not guilty. Shortly after, Myrtle closed his ranch, crippling Le Beau's economy. A couple of months later, a fire was set that burned half of the town to the ground. Investigation showed fire hoses and telephone lines had been cut so no, so no help could come to save Le Beau. Afterward, the Minneapolis and St. Louis Railroad decided not to build the much-anticipated bridge that would have made cattle transport easier and quicker. Le Beau was doomed. Then a second blaze was set in this way, destroying the remainder of the town. All that was left were concrete slabs where buildings once stood and the residential area. Subsequently, the railroad halted rail service to the town and tore up their tracks. Le Beau was no more. archaeological dig was conducted that yielded artifacts of broken pottery, arrowheads, flint tools, pieces of cups and saucers, the only dig conducted of the area. Then in 1959, the Army Corps of Engineers finished the Oahe Dam and flooded Le Beau. now is underwater. All that is left of Le Beau is a recreational area that is named the Le Beau Recreation Area. The tale of Le Beau is only one of many small town stories, sometimes tragic, sometimes not. It shows us what life is like for people of that time, how they lived, how they prospered, and sometimes how they died. <laughs>